Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So I've got Bitcoin up here, guys, on the daily, and it's seeing a bit of momentum to the upside. Right now, Bitcoin trading at $21,800. So we did see, you know, initially Bitcoin dipping into this level of support. It did hit the uh, the former all-time high that was set back in December of 2017. Coincidentally, that same high right over here formed uh, resistance back in uh, late 2020 as well. And now in this bearish downturn, we have seen Bitcoin wick down below that level. And uh, but now it's maintaining. Now it's staying above this level of support and uh, we are seeing a momentum shift. So if I just zoom in here again, Bitcoin on the daily, we are seeing over the last few days now, Bitcoin has been moving up. So just taking a look at the Bitcoin chart on the hourly, you guys can see uh, Bitcoin is trying to come out of that inverted head and shoulders pattern. And the other day I just drew a neckline here on the trend and uh, you guys can see right in and around here on the hourly, we did come out of that trend. It did come back down, back testing that trend, but now it's looking like we're off to the races. So uh, hopefully this bullish momentum uh, continues. XRP is also following that trend. The other day we saw a, a huge rally for XRP. We were trying to figure out what the heck was going on. The good news for XRP is that it did not actually uh, break down. Uh, what has happened in the past is that, you know, we've seen some FOMO and then just it kind of petering off and then going back to former uh, support levels. But now it's looking like XRP is uh, continuing to move up along with the Bitcoin trend. Right now, XRP trading at 37.3, 0.373. So we've got the crypto market, $970 billion. Bitcoin dominance still hovering in the low to mid 40s, 42.3%. Um, and you guys can see more or less a green day in the crypto space. So uh, altcoins just kind of following Bitcoin at this moment in time. It is good news. I mean, we have been waiting for uh, for this for a while now. This is the total market cap. So this is all of cryptocurrency. You guys can see uh, it did base down and around here, finding uh, a similar level of support back in January of 2021. And uh, we're coming out of that slowly but surely. So that level at about $880 billion. But now we're moving up. So hopefully this trend continues. There's a lot of news today, guys, that I wanted to cover. Wrath of Kahneman here posting this. He posted this the other day. Fleet Core is a Ripple partner, specifically with their Cambridge Global Payments brand. CorePay is a Fleet Core brand. CorePay has FX deals with a number of sporting leagues and associations, etc. Does CorePay also use RippleNet and ODL? So this was the initial uh, article that just came out the other day with regards to uh, this new partnership, the Fédération Internationale de Nations. And CorePay, a fleet court brand and global leader in business payments, are today delighted to announce a multi-year collaboration that will see CorePay and cross-border group... Oops. That will see CorePay and Cross Border Group provide their foreign exchange FX solutions to FINA. This new deal was announced on the occasion on the 19th FINA World Championship Budapest uh, 2022, which is playing host to the leading aquatics athletics from across the globe. FINA and the wider FINA family will gain access to CorePay's innovative foreign exchange solutions to help manage currency exposure uh, for international payments. So we can see this is a cross border payment platform. And, uh, you know, when we have these international sporting events and you have spectators coming from all around the world, uh, it's going to be more important than ever to be able to facilitate these types of transfers fast, quickly, efficiently in uh, whatever fiat currency belongs to that particular nation. Traditionally, what we've done is we've gone to currency exchanges before going on vacation and, uh, you know, taking out whatever it is, three, four, five hundred bucks, thousand bucks, and uh, converting it to the local currency so you have cash on hand. And I mean, you can always use your credit card as well, but your credit card company tends to uh, ding you the exchange rate plus a few extra points. So, you know, what's a better option? Obviously, having a cross-border solution that uh, that can, uh, you know, first of all, source the liquidity and transfer the funds, boom, in real time uh, without much of a cost. And so we're seeing this now with CorePay and this uh, particular FINA relationship as the global governing body of six aquatic disciplines, swimming, water polo, diving, high diving, artistic swimming, and open water swimming, FINA collaboration with CorePay Cross Border will create valuable opportunities for the global aquatics community, event hosts, and FINA partners providing international payments and foreign exchange solutions and capabilities. So one of the things that uh, Rath of Kahneman noted does CorePay use RippleNet and ODL? Well, T-Hole Betting XRP also brought this up. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but Ripple does already have a partnership with Cambridge. And uh, this was directly on Cambridge's website. They are, in fact, changing their brand to CorePay. So CorePay essentially is 
Cambridge, and for those of you guys who uh, m might not remember this, this was from back in 2020, when uh, Cambridge Global Payments, a fleet core company and a provider of integrated cross-border payments and currency risk management solutions, announced today the commercial launch of its partnership with Ripple, the enterprise blockchain solution for certain global payments to deliver cross-border payment solutions to B2B customers. So now Cambridge, which uh, has been a Ripple partner since uh, October of 2020, uh, is now changing their name or has changed their name, changed their branding to CorePay. So it's looking as though that this is where the connection lies. And uh, what it sounds like here is that uh, with this latest news is that they will likely leverage ODL uh, to settle a lot of these cross-border payments. So interesting news there from the Wrath of Kahneman. Also, Verve. Here's some more news, guys, with regards to Verve. They extend Novati's reach to European businesses through local licensing and an array of banking services. Now, we know Novati, definitely a Ripple partner. Digital payments company Novati has strengthened its capabilities in Europe with the launch of Verve, a new business payments and banking service in that market. And so using Verve, business customers in Europe can open a digital bank account with its own unique IBAN number or international bank account number for standardized banking services worldwide. This is the international equivalent of Australia's B. SB system, but on a standardized global scale. So with Verve, they are uh, expanding the market right down here. Critically, all of these services will be Apple, Google, Samsung mobile friendly for ease of payments in the tech savvy European region, courtesy of existing Novati partnerships worldwide. So being able to extend uh, the technology through Novati, of course, Ripple enabled. Some quotes here just with regards to uh, this partnership and what the technology will extend to. Continuing on our strength of enabling businesses uh, to pay and be paid, Verve will offer an innovative suite of payment solutions, including merchant accounts accounts, money transfers, and in the future include expense and payroll management and the ability to accept customer payments through a customizable checkout page. Uh, also providing these services in uh, one place will save businesses the hassle of dealing with multiple providers for different solutions while also getting access to Novati's world-leading technology. And uh, finally, the launch of Verve is part of Novati's continued expansion in the EU. This is furthered by the application to obtain our license as an e-money institution in Europe, which will enable Novati to issue a wide range of financial products to the mature European payments landscape. And of course, doing this through Novati, Verve can leverage uh, the power of RippleNet. And so, uh, you know, this is why we're starting to see, and I know Brad Garlinghouse had predicted it last year, uh, and maybe even back two years ago now, that the crypto market, and I don't even think it was so much of a prediction as it uh, was just seeing the writing on the wall, the crypto market is going to consolidate. The bigger companies are going to buy up or merge with the smaller companies and create mega companies that will all be running on DLT technology in a lot of these cases, RippleNet technology. And so this is what's ultimately going to add more value to the XRPL, right? The flywheel effect. So we're seeing it in motion. These companies are taking on, uh, you know, whatever clients they have, bring them in, get them onto a better service, better technology running on RippleNet. We're seeing it now, guys, more transactions on the XRPL adding every single year. Uh, guys, this one from DJ Peter Vass. This has to do with XRPL Labs and the Sum Wallet. They've just released their pro beta version. So I don't know if you guys use the Sum Wallet. It is another uh, option to custody your XRP. Uh, the version is available only by paid subscription, which is purchased in the ecosystem's native token XRP. However, the full function functionality of Sum Pro will not be available until the end of beta testing. To start using it though, uh, you can just switch to beta pro mode directly in the Sum Wallet itself. And once the subscription is purchased, the available functionality and interface opens up to the users. So if you guys are looking for uh, another uh, option to custody your XRP, the Sum Wallet is also available to you. I will link this in the description if you guys are interested. Among the innovations that developers of the Sum Wallet tease in pro beta is the ability to split the wallet's funds into two accounts. So uh, you can have some of your XRP in a spending account and some in a savings account, for example. Also, each user of the Sum Wallet will have the opportunity to claim one free Tangem card, uh, which is a kind of cold device for storing cryptocurrency. Among other pluses, paid subscribers will have access to premium technical support and the ability to buy XRP using euros implemented through an on-ramp, off-ramp solution. So um, it's sounding as though this is uh, geared towards European clients. Specifically, I don't know if you are um, you know, from another country like the US, if uh, you can participate in this yet. Uh, it is also important to clarify that you Users of the wallet will have to go through a KYC check verification. The requirement, however, is optional in the beta version. So um, I don't know if uh, you are from the US and you guys uh, have tried to download this, please do put it down in the section if it does work for you or not. Um, it's sounding as though you can buy XRP through euros though. So definitely uh, if you are living in Europe, it is full steam ahead. Of course, uh, Vietz Vin and XRPL Labs is based in the Netherlands. Uh, anyway, I wanted to thank DJ Peter Vass for pointing that out. 
And some more Ripple Partner news, guys. This one coming from Finextra. The Bank of America, they are investing in iCapital. Bank of America has built on its partnership with iCapital Network by making a strategic investment in the alternative investment platform. Terms of the deal was not disclosed, although iCapital says the investment was at the same $6 billion plus valuation as its $50 million funding round in December, founded in 2013. So just giving us a little bit of background information. Uh, Nancy Fami, head of alternative investments, uh, specialty asset management and investment solutions specialists of Bank of America. She said, I Capital and Bank of America share the belief that alternative investments are an important component for a well diversified portfolio, and it is critical to increase access, education, and service to advisors and their clients. Um, I don't know how much we're starting to see banks uh, in the USA specifically trying to grow during this period of time, um, or if they're, or if a lot of them are sitting on their laurels, assuming that uh, you know they are still going to be top dog. Coming out of this new financial switchover, Bank of America, of course, is Ripple enabled, and uh, that partnership had been confirmed, I think, even before the beer flu hit. But here we're seeing them again. Okay, a Ripple partner looking to expand. Now they're partnering with iCapital uh, for uh, investments and an investment strategy platform. We know one day all this is going to be done using the blockchain, so uh, this is, I guess, just another step towards that. Wanted to keep going, guys. I got a lot of news today. T Hole Betting XRP pointing this out with regards to Ripple partner RIA. Pan Asia Bank partners with Ripple customer RIA. So, this out east in the Pan Asian area, as the truly Sri Lankan bank, Pan Asian Bank, continues to add value to its customer experience. The latest customer centric initiative, Pan Asia Bank, is partnering with RIA Money, who is a Ripple partner, the US based third largest remittance platform in the world to offer its customers a wider choice of low-cost money transfer channels. With a worldwide network of 507,000 branches in 160 countries, RIA is an easily accessible and reliable way for Sri Lankans working abroad to send their remittances to Sri Lanka. Their loved ones can visit the Pan-Asia Bank branch and collect the remittance in cash. So, just another bank here uh, partnering with uh, Ripple partner Ria Money, uh, another one of those remittance companies uh, where, you know, serving underbanked and unbanked communities, that's really a pain point. And so um, this particular bank has just decided to partner with Ripple partner Ria Money Transfer. Again, guys, just going back to that idea of the flywheel effect, adding more, even if it isn't Ripple directly, uh, buying up companies, which, uh, you know, Brad Garlinghouse says, you know, it's not really on the mind of Ripple. Ripple, however, is uh, leasing software to uh, smaller companies companies and uh, now the bigger companies are realizing oh wow I see value in this smaller company they are running on DLT technology uh, and maybe in some cases these companies are also running on DLT technology and they figure okay we've got the money let's buy them up let's make our company bigger let's merge and so we're seeing this happen time and time again anyway I uh, wanted to thank T-Hole Bedick for posting that and another one from the Wrath of Condom and seems important, Ripple Investment MoneyTap will merge into SBI Remit, a Ripple ODL user. Why? Seems like a couple of reasons. So it reads as if MoneyTap, used by many regional banks, will give SBI Remit more traction with them and another entry point. Here's just a clip from uh, the SBI press release. In addition to strengthening the competitiveness of SBI Remit's main business of remittance to foreign residents in Japan in order to expand corporate transactions, especially small and medium-sized enterprises, by merging with Money tap. We will strengthen the system and complement the cooperation with regional financial institutions, uh, grow SBI Remit's international remittance business, and pursue synergies that leverage the strengths of both companies, businesses, domains. We have determined that we can enhance our business foundation and competitiveness and build a system that can win globally. So, Ratha Kahneman continues by saying, uh, moreover, SBI remits regulatory compliance or KYC AML process opens up more overseas remittance channel possibilities for money tap. Note that they also say the merger is a condition to suspend the acquisition of permission for electronic settlement agency business at SBI remit. Merging simplifies the remittance connection between the two. So you've got to understand that as well. Uh, when these companies merge, of course, that kind of streamlines uh, both companies' processes and uh, streamlines them into one. So two become one, and uh, that obviously makes it uh, a lot more efficient, I am assuming. Tentatively scheduled for September, MoneyTap will no longer exist as a company. So they will be fully integrated into SBI as of, uh, it looks as though as of September 2022. Remember, it was a part of SBI and spun off uh, as its own company. And so to be determined though, do Milton Berg and Yoshikawa of Ripple remain with MoneyTap or move up in SBI Remit? 
And Wrath of Kahneman also bringing up uh, the same thing that uh, that Brad Garling has prediction does bring to mind Brad's prediction regarding the industry consolidation last year. So again, another example here of just the industry consolidating, how we're seeing uh, bigger companies either merging, partnering with, or buying out uh, smaller companies, and how this is essentially having an effect, uh, not only for their bottom line, but also getting that flywheel effect moving and uh, adding more value to the XRPL. And so, you know, just to kind of shift gears a little bit, this one coming from Michael at Val 5 Links here. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse says SEC contradicted itself by suing over XRP and then allowing Coinbase to do an IPO. So the CEO of Ripple's calling out the SEC while speaking at the Collision Technology Conference. Here's what he said when Coinbase went public, which really wasn't that long ago, Coinbase was trading XRP. They enabled customers and businesses to trade XRP. The SEC had to approve their S1 such that Coinbase could go public. The SEC now seems to take the position when they sued us that, hey, XRP is a security and always has been. But they approved Coinbase going public even though Coinbase is not a registered broker dealer. So there are contradictions here and the SEC almost not within its own organization knowing left hand from right hand. So another point here that Brad Garlinghouse uh, made over there at Collision is that, you know, we had the Coinbase IPO or rather the SEC approved the Coinbase IPO yet They've still decided to scrutinize or uh, rather impede XRP from being traded on open markets, at least in the United States. Or, uh, I mean, I guess technically they have not uh, halted the trading of XRP, but in um, you know an abundance of caution, a lot of these exchanges have stopped trading XRP on their exchange. Brad Garlinghouse goes on to say, you know, they should be uh, more clear about consistency. One of the challenges for every crypto company right now is that it's not clear where the rules of the road are. Uh, as we know, that is a big talking point for uh, Ripple and Brad Garlinghouse. Consistency. So everyone at a firm has to have a set of rules to follow. I think the vast majority of people in the crypto industry want to play by the rules. Let's just be clear about what those rules are. Let's be super clear about what we're trying to regulate. So uh, that clip from Brad Garlinghouse, and there is a, a link here courtesy of XRP arcade attached to this uh daily hodl article if you guys are interested i will link the article in the description of the video so thanks so much to michael uh just for posting that but guys that synergy ripple net leveraging the xrpl for transactions is not slowing down and uh as i'd reported a couple of years ago and uh you know talking about it over the last couple of years fedwire which we know is going to be ripple enabled through volente technology they have recently released some statistics this coming from lynn alden here fedwire performs about 200 million transactions per year averaging at about five million dollars per transaction resulting in roughly one quadrillion dollars us in annual gross settlement value. So that is the value of these Fedwire transactions. And so here's just a chart just uh, demonstrating what they were back in 2013 all the way through 2021. And as you guys can see, these uh, these numbers have steadily grown, okay? Annual volume growth uh, by a percentage. Uh, in 2013, it was only 2%. And by 2021, it's 11.1%. So you can see significant growth over 5x in eight years. And it's likely these transactions are only going to grow even further. So that's about one quadrillion dollars US uh, in annual gross settlement per year. Uh, and I like bringing this statistic up every now and then. How much does Swift transfer a day? Well, that's about five trillion dollars. And uh, do we have the yearly statistic there? I think uh, the yearly statistic, right, right down here, 1.25 quadrillion dollars uh, per year in Swift. This is just from a Reddit forum, but I remember reading it from somewhere else. 1.25 trillion from Swift. So we're starting to see it creep up slowly but surely. Lots of potential volume for the XRP ecosystem. This brought to us by Matthew LANY. By automating wire processing with Valente's Fedwire as a service in the cloud, the bank will benefit from resilient, reliable, and scalable payment technology. They will be able to smoothly handle increasing wire volumes and ensure that their customers' wires are never missed, duplicated, or delayed and uh also just bringing up that point here uh with regards to valente who will be the back end partner for fedwire matt asked this back in 2020 will xrp be a possible settlement mechanism for this platform and uh valente did respond valente's platform can be used to settle through xrp via our ripple connection and then uh, gave a link to that uh we can't wait to get more banks on board so this wasn't uh with regards to fedwire specifically However, they have confirmed they are uh, they they can settle through XRP as one of their outlets. And since we know XRP was created to move all the money, it would only make sense that eventually one quadrillion dollars 
could be running through RippleNet one day through the Fedwire service, and that is just Fedwire alone, guys. You can only imagine the demand for XRP at that point in time. So is it any surprise that BIS economic advisor Huan Songshin literally describes the functionality of XRP and on-demand liquidity without saying XRP and ODL? Listen to this clip. So what this type of system enables you to do is to avoid the current practice we should just say, you know, if I want to make a payment um, to a, uh, you know, on behalf of my client to a supplier, uh, you know, on, on another continent, what you need to do is to hold a deposit uh, in a bank in that jurisdiction, ideally, and then just call up the bank and say, look, debit my account and credit the account of the, of the supplier. And if you don't have an account, you have to use a correspondent bank. And if you don't even have a correspondent bank with a, you know, with a deposit in that jurisdiction, you need to string along a whole host of different correspondent banks. Now, for that system to work, you need to hold balances at all of these different uh, um, parts of the, of the chain. And uh, in a way, it's um, you know, going back to the origins of uh, you know, supply chain financing, where the credit function and the payment function all are bundled together. Um, and so it's, um, it's incredibly intensive in terms of liquidity, um, and there are the you know, operational challenges all along the chain. What this kind of platform can do is to just short circuit all of that. And of course, you know, what you would need to do is, of course, convert some of your deposits into tokens. Yeah? So, you, so you, know, you cannot avoid tying up some of your deposits somewhere, but you can just do it once. And let's say just hold it in London. And then the tokens can circulate everywhere, um, you know, without having to, you know, uh, lock up um, liquidity at different points, uh, you know, around the world, um, you know, together with all the, you know, all the other problems that, uh, that go along with that. Now, um, how far are we from seeing these things in action? Well, we've done experiments and they work. Um, what we need to do is to make sure that we can actually build this to scale uh, and uh, build it so that they have the resilience uh, that will really, you know, um, uh, stand the test of, uh, you know, real world use. Uh, but the technology is pretty clear. And, you know, this is not uh, experimental technology. You know. So Song Shin here, the BIS is economic advisor. Uh, essentially saying we need to convert there, there's a system here and what we're going to do is uh, instead of having correspondent banks across the world instead of tying up that capital what will happen is that there will be a, a, a currency and that you will convert that to coins and then at the other end you'll convert it to another currency is essentially describing xrp and odl as uh, brought to us by e rob underscore cali here on twitter so i wanted to thank rob for that tweet really demonstrating that you know, these guys are not keeping it a secret. They are coming out more and more without naming the company, without naming the token. They are coming out, though, more and more. And, um, I mean, for us in the XRP community, I think it's very obvious, but I don't think to many people it is that obvious what is happening quite yet. And this is why, you know, in the real world, I go out and I tell people, guys, this is what they're doing with cryptocurrency, especially for those people who still think crypto is a Ponzi scheme. I have a friend who still thinks that, and I just got to shake my head, and the worst part is... He works in politics. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, if the politicians still don't get it, I mean, he's not as high up as some of these guys. But, you know, these it, it, <laughs> there are so many people who still really don't realize what the new financial system is going to look like. But, you know, when we're hearing this kind of thing from the BIS, it does give me confidence. We're just waiting, guys. The lawsuit is obviously a big part of that. And so to that point, Wheezy at Nerd Nation Unboxed posted this. This is an ex-SEC attorney, Nick Morgan. This is interesting. Listen to what he says about the SEC. Listen to what he says about uh, how the SEC operates with regards to settlements and accusations. Uh, once they settle, uh, just listen to the clip. It's only about a minute long. It got me really excited considering what Brad Garlinghouse has also said about the Ripple SEC lawsuit. And we'll talk about the context of that after this. Listen to this though first. Um, the SEC has on occasion required settling defendants to make admissions, but by and large, most SEC settlements involve the defendant not admitting to violations of the federal securities laws. That doesn't help you much reputationally once the SEC has filed a lawsuit in federal court and made this public display 
alleging that you've violated the federal securities laws. And I think the point, I haven't read the post you referred to, but I think the point being made there was if you settle a case, even if you don't admit the SEC's allegations, what the world sees is the SEC's complaint making those allegations. There's no retraction of those allegations. And there's a federal court order imposing sanctions on you as a result of those allegations. So reputationally, uh, you know, you're right. The SEC would never sort of retract what it said. The only way to get the SEC to acknowledge that its legal opinion is incorrect is to win and get the judge to adopt your legal arguments. And that means taking the case all the way through trial, potentially. So here we have ex-SEC attorney Nick Morgan stating, the SEC will never admit to wrongdoing even uh, if the case decides to settle. So maybe this is why Ripple has decided, no, we are taking this straight to the top. We are going to trial. Our case and our arguments are so concrete that we have the utmost confidence that we are going to win the case. And at that point, only at that point, will the SEC admit wrongdoing, admit that you cannot paint all cryptocurrencies with one brush. It's almost as if Ripple is acting as the white knight in the crypto industry, taking them to task, not wussing out and settling, but taking them straight to trial because this, at least according to Nick Morgan, is the only way the SEC will admit that they were finally wrong. So is this the reason Ripple has decided to do this? Is it for the greater good of the entire crypto industry? And could we get clearer regulatory clarity out of this if it does go to trial because the SEC will be forced to admit wrongdoing? I think it sounds likely, but that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.